Good morning, Remy. Good morning, Rick. You, uh, how is everything today? Everything is fantastic. I think I have Your a Your hair looks really good. Thanks. Did you get it done? No, I, and oh. I, not even that. I've run out of my good shampoo, so I use James's like two in one shampoo, but then I still have to put conditioner the head on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Like the ocean charge from like one of the men's seals. But I did take advantage of Prime Day and I ordered a very large bottle of my shampoo. And... Okay, so Prime Day. I Prime Days, because it's two days. It's not it's just today. one day. It was to yesterday and today, right? I think it was, I think it ended yesterday. It was the 11th and 12th. Isn't today the 12th? Is today the 12th? I don't know. I don't know. Well, so did you take advantage of Prime Days? No, I really wasn't sure what to do, Remy. I got um, Red King I mean, believe me, I know how to use Amazon. Yeah, I got Redken <laughs> shampoo for $49 when it should have been $100 for like the giant, like for the shampoo and conditioner, for like the giant bottles. So I'm going to mark that one up as a, as a win. Did uh, I? So what else is on there? Like what else would one buy? So I bought the shirts, my like favorite Amazon shirts that for $18. I have to look at my calendar now to see. Yeah. I didn't really buy very much stuff. And I did buy beanbag chairs for my kids. Some people really go down the rabbit hole. I, I didn't. You were right. You were right. Today is the 13th. It's because we were supposed to come on here yesterday. I know. It messes with my schedule. Um, Did I tell you about my Amazon purchase last week? No, what did you buy? I bought an ice maker that's like a commercial one. Well, you did it tell me that. You told me I needed it. And I had one, and then I got rid of it. Because I like to do the shaped ice that James won't drink. Like, I have the octagons, and like, you know, like the, the fancy ones, and the stick ice, and skull ice, and Frenchy ice. Like, it looks like little Frenchy dogs. I mean, I... Why was I even surprised by that? I mean, speaking of which... Uh, still shout out to Bill's Coffee here. Where are we gonna go? I gave someone one of these, and I was like, hey, cause they like canned iced coffee, and they're like, are they... We like the idea of canned iced coffee. And I gave it to her and I was like, Sarah, just try it. It has no weird aftertaste. And she calls me yesterday and she's like, oh my God, I'm placing a giant order. It's fantastic. So She loved it. She does. You have a gift box. I have to send it off. I have a box gift. I have Bones Coffee box set for you. But for me today, I am drinking I don't think I'm it. salty siren. And that is the sea salted caramel mocha. It smells delicious when you brew it. It sounds really good. Um, Remy, speaking of drinks, like I cannot do energy drinks like that. I can't even do anything other than a regular pop. That's a, but that's just ice. That's iced coffee. It's not an energy drink. It's just iced coffee. No, no, no. I said speaking of drinks. Okay. That's <laughs> like. Yeah. Same page here. Get on the same page. Um, just let me have this one more sip of coffee. I'll be good to go. I know. Yeah. Um, I can only do like, I only like diet pops if I'm going to have a pop and really I don't even drink pop anymore, which is crazy. Cause I used to drink a lot of it. Um, but I like, I don't do regular pop. I don't do energy drinks. Energy drinks make me so sick. But recently People have been talking a lot about these Celsius drinks. Yeah. See, they leave a weird aftertaste for me, too. Have you had one? Mm -hmm. You've had a Celsius? I've had a lot of Celsius. Oh, God. I, I've i laughed so hard because it was actually Brandon's brother who was like, I drank uh -oh. two of them one, one day, Breck. And I was like. I, the first time I had one, I did not. I just thought it was like canned sparkling water. Because when you look at it, nothing about that, like about the packaging says energy drink, right? 
it looks like you should drink it on the way to yoga because it's like silver and there's like a pretty piece of fruit on it. <laughs> Nothing about it makes you think it's an energy drink. And it made me a little jittery and I was like, what is in this? Well, um, go look at the TikToks now. After he started telling me about it, because I'd never really heard about it. And he was like, oh my God. He's like, I was so wired, Breck. He's like, I was cleaning house like a mad person. He doesn't clean house and doing all this shit that he normally doesn't do. And so after we had the conversation, of course, my little AI person heard me talk about it through my phone and it was coming up on TikTok. And it was hilarious. There was this woman, she's like, you need a sofa moved into a space that you can't get. I'm your girl. If you need a car lifted up to get the tire changed, I'm your girl after one Celsius drink. So I thought it was funny. Yeah, Michelle Cheek, Michelle Cheek really likes them. I don't. Uh, I used to be able to like time Red Bull really well, like where I would time drinking another one before the crash of the previous one. And um, like two years ago, I guess two, maybe three years ago, we went to that Oregon show for James's birthday. We're coming home because oh, that was just like the trip from hell. Like the show was successful. Half of California was on fire. We're trying to get home. And uh, I was like, oh, I'll just power through like I used to. I cannot power through like I used to. So um, by my fourth Red Bull, we had a pullover. And James was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm either going to puke or shit myself to death. Yeah, uh, my after. stomach hurts. I was just going to say, okay, I can't believe I'm about to say this out and on loud for <laughs> the world to hear. But if I had one sip of anything like that, well, before I had one sip, I would have to know where every single bathroom was placed because I would shit myself. I cannot do it. Like, I get extremely sick yeah, from them. Some of it, it's the, it's the boring in some of them that makes me jittery. Uh, I did this TikTok when I was at Walmart one day because it was like jitter free, I think it's like jitter free, I saw it. jitterless coffee, and like it's a quokka on it, which is like the why little would you parts. Want that? It, well, like, I'm like, why? I was like, I don't want my coffee to be jitter free. And it's like also, Quokas are like these little marsupial, and when they freak out, they throw their babies at predators so they can get away. And I was like, I don't think that they're jitter free. Oh it's, it's bad marketing all the way around. Um. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with the Cowgirls. I'm Brett Kruger, and I'm Remy Greer. Yeah, and um, last week we had Crystal, and I talked to a few people who watched our episode last week. And they were excited to go check out her things. And I think a few of them may have already ordered some stuff. So, kind of cool. Well, how come we weren't here yesterday, Breck? It's my new favorite story to tell. I know. I was trying to ease into it, Remy. <laughs> I was trying to ease into it. So, folks, I do have a very funny story. I mean, kind of. If you were living it, it wasn't very no, funny. No, it's fantastic. And... I have retold her story since she told me and painted a great picture of it. <laughs> so most of you know that we live by the lake. We have a farm on our farm is on one side of the road and the lake is on the other. And at the front of our property in front of the road and lake is our grove, which the grove has a ton of dead trees. And we hired a company to come in this year and take the dead trees down. Well, what is happening is that there's a lot of bats who have made homes in those trees that we are now removing from the grove. When you take something's home away, it probably needs a new home, correct? Yes. And um, Tuesday night? Tuesday yeah, Tuesday. Night, Brennan and I were laying in bed, sleeping. He was kind of sleeping because he was also watching the new Netflix series that he's obsessed with, Suits. And it's like one thirty in the okay. morning. So side note, I'm not trying to distract detract from your story. USA Network used to have the best shows because that was on USA and so was Psych and USA. Monk. Or, that was on USA? Mm -hmm. That was originally on USA. It's very good. I watched it when it first I think Harvey Spencer is so hot. Um, so anywho... We're laying in bed and I was sleeping. I was dead asleep. And all of a sudden next to me is just like Brandon screaming, like hands going. He's under the covers. He's, 
he's down like on my level and I'm like what are you doing and he's like huh there's a bat in here and um I'm like yeah right and he gently took the covers down and looked and when he did it it freaking dived him again and he's like I told you there's a bat in here and I'm like oh my god I'm deathly afraid of them too so I'm not gonna save the day and <coughs> my phone was like I had to go outside of the blankets to get my phone I was my solution was to call our 15 year old son because he would come and take care of it I thought and I'm like I'm gonna call Bodie Brandon and he's like no then you have to take your hand out of this cover he's like I don't think you should do it and I'm like yeah you're right I'm like well what are we gonna do we're just gonna lay up here and hope that it goes away and he said no and um we were sleeping naked I had underwear on but that was it and um so anyhow he says no I'm we're gonna get out of this bed we're gonna go underneath the sheets and we're gonna go to the door so we can get out of here I'm like okay so I'm not doing that and he was like well I'm gonna give you five seconds to decide if you're truly gonna stay in this bed because once I leave you are gonna be laying here without any covers and naked free for that bat's taking and I'm like shit I'm going with you so I get <laughs> under the covers together and when I get scared and nervous like that I mean I can barely walk Remy like it scares me like I feel like my legs might give out at any time and he's scared like a little girl too and that's dangerous I mean we're over 40 now we could have easily broken ankle getting out of that room under that cover and so we get out of the room, we get downstairs and I'm like, so now what, what are you going to do? Like thinking he might have a grand plan. And he's like, well, I'm going to go to the trailer and sleep in the trailer. I'm like, uh, uh, you're going back up there and getting that thing. So I locked myself in the bathroom and, uh, I go peek. I mean, it was like something out of the great outdoors. Have you seen the movie? He looked like freaking John Candy. I open the door and there he is. He's got his um, his swim trunks on, a long sleeve shirt, his sunglasses, and my rice hat, like a big rice hat. Yeah, and, the garden hats. Like the and a broom. Hat. And he, he, as he walked past me, he handed me a blanket. And he goes, I'm going up there. And I want you to stand at the bottom of the stairs with this blanket because if he comes down here, I want you to throw the blanket on top of the bat. It's like, all right. <laughs> Do you think that I, I mean, I, like I look back at it and I'm like, if that bat would have flown down the stairs, my legs would have given out. There's no way I was throwing a freaking blanket over the bat. Um, so anyhow, he comes upstairs. I'm downstairs holding the blanket by the stairwell. And... He's got, he's in the room. I can hear him. <laughs> I mean, it sounded like World War Three in there. I didn't know if I was going to have any furniture left when I went back up there. We know you don't and, need furniture anyway, Brick. I know. I, I, <laughs> we're going to live without it. Anyway, um, he comes down and he's got the bat and a shirt. He had it wrapped up in a shirt and he released it. Um, it is illegal to kill them. Uh, you're asking the wrong person. I don't know. It was dead. <laughs> um, uh, it's, like, hey, it's, like a it's like a stand your ground thing, right? Like you were on my property threatening my safety. Yeah, I'm like, who would like be like, can't kill it? I mean, when Brandon was, he thought the damn thing was like this big. It was this big. It's the biggest bat I've ever seen. Well, no, when you're laying in bed and they're dive bombing you, they do look freaking big. But, uh, yeah, so we go back up in the room. The broom was literally in several pieces. The freaking broom part of it was cracked in half. There's nothing left of the broom. Everything else seemed to be intact. But, yeah, so I couldn't go back to sleep for a while there. I was scared. Yeah, but you found the bat outside. You said it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big. It was like that big. 
But anyhow, uh, yeah. so Breck sent me a message. She goes, hey, um, can we move it back a half hour? And uh, if we have internet problems, we're not going to blame Breck today because it's, I think it's my phone because it's trying to die. So my phone was at 23%. And I was like, uh, she's not going to work out today. So she called me later. She said, I didn't go to sleep until two. But what happened? So she tells me the story. And then I proceeded, which I was like almost peeing myself laughing so hard. And then I sent uh, her and Brandon the picture of Jack Sparrow walking to the shore underneath, like the water <laughs> underneath the boat. Uh, yeah, that's immediately what I thought when you were like, get underneath these sheets. I was like, it's Jack Sparrow in the boat going to shore. Oh my God. Um, another fun thing that uh, we did this week is on Monday, Remy, um, I went with my sister-in-law and her son and then some of the girl cousins and their sons to Valley Fair so we went with the boys and god it's been so long since I've done anything like that and it was a ton of fun I said they've got to do people watching at a water park mm -hmm. apparently um Breck bought serial killer glasses I did I wish I I'm also them. impressed that Bronson knows who Dahmer is oh well he watches TikTok like all the time oh. Well, I mean, I watched. Endless. And it was like the top 10 Netflix movie for a long time. That is true. I forgot about. Uh, well, yeah, no, Bundy was. Bundy, was there one on Dahmer too? Bundy was. The, the... Yeah, there was one on Dahmer. Mm -hmm. I would never watch that. No way. Um, Remy, have you ever heck? done the water slides where they take the bottom out from underneath of you? Yes. Aren't those a rush? So uh, we have a water like park. It. Well, we have a bunch of water parks out here, but there was one called, it's still there. It's called Raging Waters. And uh, there was one, there was a, like a thing there called Dropout, and they would tell you to not sit up for sure when you went down it. And I was there on multiple occasions when people sat up because you would like come down, and if you sat up, it would like lift you off of the slide. I don't know how water parks stay in business because it's just a death trap. And like, well, I love them. I'm still going to go love them. But I'm just like, yeah, like, you're just telling people, like, oh, don't sit, lay down. Don't sit up. Let's hope for the best. You know, well, so that does scare me, Remy. I, you know, like the big blue ones, like the really tall ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to be able to do them all the time, but I won't do them because there's no cover. And when you go over that hump. You yeah, do. then like sometimes you would come down and like hit your ass really hard, even when you were like, yes. down. like, and they were sending like little kids down there, like little. I, I I don't know how that's safe. Like I feel like there should be a cover over the top of them damn things, those blue ones. I don't get in any of those those things that don't have a, that aren't enclosed because I feel like people could die. Or you could put mesh over them so you could just like stick your face. <laughs> So we had a uh, Kyle's so, birthday. We had Kyle's birthday party last weekend, though. I sent you the picture of the bounce house. Yes, you had a whole obstacle course. Yeah, and uh, really, it's because I'm a poor planner. So I called to get I'm the bounce get house. So well, <laughs> I called to get the bounce house, and I'm like, "Yeah, we don't have one." And I was like, oh, "Do you have anything?" She's like, "Yeah, we have this obstacle course." And then they're asking, they're like, uh, "Do you have grass?" And like, I've rented from this company for a long time. I was like, oh, I got like grass and dirt. And he's like, no, it has to be green grass or you can't have a water. Can't have water on the obstacle course. Or the bounce house. Because it get muddy? Bad. Is that why they're... It gets muddy and it ruins the bottom. But I was like, I feel like yeah. I'm trying to this against my grass. I was trying to say that we were grass-ish. Grass adjacent. <laughs> Just not grass. But it was awesome. So there was like, you had to run through things and climb things and end it in a slide. So we had a, um, a good party. Oh. I said, of course, Remy would make her kid's birthday party competition. Yeah. And then we gave him a lot of Nerf guns, and then there was a Nerf war combined into the obstacle course. I like it. Adapt or die, man. Well, it sounds like it kept him busy. Yes. Um, so our topic today is kind of when I got back from Valley Fair, Remy and I talked, and we were talking about what we should talk about today. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just kind of like, we did this and I don't feel like it's just me. I feel like it's everybody. I think everybody does it. Like we 
have become our kids source of en entertainment for everything they these kids today have no what is the word I'm looking for, Remy? You had it. You had it. You said it. Earlier. No, they're just like overstimulated all the time. Yes. It's always like it's so. It's like right. Uh, so if we go to like uh, Disneyland and the line's more than fifteen minutes long, it's like, oh my god, I can't stand here. Like, meanwhile, we're playing like the game. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called Heads Up. You see, play it on your phone. And you're like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And like, oh, this is boring. This is boring. And I was like, bro, we used to wait in line for like two and a half hours for one ride. Like. No yeah. cell phones, just hanging out in line. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was talking about it with a girlfriend and her husband the other day. Sorry, I've got a kink in my leg. Um, and uh, he had made the comment, he's like, well, they're always on their phones, you know? And I said, fair, but so are we. They've learned it from somewhere. I mean, you hate to, you know, admit your wrongs or say that you know you could potentially be the bad influence on your children or those around you but they've learned it from us so i was talking to um some clients yesterday and i called them to talk to them and they were laughing and i was like oh and they go if you would have told me when i was 15 that i could have a mini computer in my pocket to send dick pics with i would have never believed you because they're like, think of all the things that technology offers us. And we use it to look at cat pictures and send unwanted pictures to other people. <laughs> and it's true. Like, our kids don't. Um, and, like, we work at it, right? We work at making them go outside, at getting them off of the gaming systems. But it's still, they find their way back there. And even when they're outside, right, it's like, so what's next? What's next? And I'm like. I lived outside all summer. I think I only wore like three pieces of clothes most of the summer. <laughs> like, I just rotated my swimsuits through. And, I know. Uh, well, that's, um, we've been busy with people. Uh, last week, we had people here all week. We went to a three-day horse show over the weekend. We came home on Sunday night. On Monday morning, we left at 7.30 for Valley Fair. We did not get home until... Well, we were at Valley Fair until 6 o'clock that night. So that tells me that we didn't go home until like 8 o'clock. And on the way home, Bronson's like, so what's the plan for tomorrow? And I wanted to just choke him. Because seriously, the plan, the plan was then for me to do three days of baseball in a row. Yeah. And then he wanted to have a friend over. And I mean... I'm not going to have the friend over anymore, but that's more because my farrier was here yesterday and gave me the bill for the freaking truck door. Remember the one that he ran? I forgot, I forgot, I forgot about the truck door. Yeah. Brandon is trying to talk me off of the ledge. He's like, I mean, it's done and over with. That happened six months ago. I don't think that we should talk about old things. There's nothing we can do about it now. I'm like, do you know how expensive the freaking door is, Remy? I have no idea because I just dent mine and leave with my life. $4,500. If it was $4,500, I would probably not be able to be on here this morning because <laughs> I would be having a freaking... So how, how much was it? 2000 Yeah, that's fair enough. It's a whole truck door. <laughs> the, it, the door itself is like worth half of what the truck is worth, Remy. Yeah, it's a... Uh... I wanted to kill him. Like, I had to stay away from him for a little while after I found that information out because I just needed to let it sink in. But he didn't know that I knew that. He didn't know that I was delivered that news. And then he came up to me and started asking for all of these things that he wanted. You're like, you know what I want? That was the wrong decision yesterday. you like, you know what I want is an extra $2,000 to pay for the door. Like, it's, all that uh, money that you thought you had, you don't have it anymore. But why is that? Like, because I just got the bill for your freaking door that you ruined. Yeah, and it's like they want stuff all the time, right? Like, um, I'm just, 
and it is our fault, right? Like we created them by we making created it. And, and life, life is easier and more difficult anyway, right? Yeah. We have so much stuff, and we've had this conversation before, but I had it with someone else too. The problem is we have so much technology, right? So we can be more efficient, and then we think we can do more with our time. The only thing that happens is then we just stress about that we should be getting more done, and we don't disconnect and do things. So I've been reading a lot lately, again. I have and I uh, And the worst thing that's ever happened to me is the Kindle Unlimited app. So I was like, because it's not like I have to go to the bookstore and then it's pick out a gratification. Book. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm done with this one. What's the next one? What's the next one? I've read 33 books in the last two weeks. They're short, though. The Kindle Unlimited no, some, of are, no, some of these are like 600 pages because you can buy, or buy you rent um, older books. Like, I'm just... Yeah. I, well, um, in the conversation that I was having the other day with one of my friends, husband and her, um, I made mention that I feel like, um, our generation feels like we need to give our kids things that we maybe didn't have. Um, when I grew up, I never went without anything, Remy. I had a ton of shit. I mean, like, I'm saying that... Yeah. I mean, a ton of shit to do. Like, opportunities to do things. But we lived out in the country. I didn't have any friends that lived close. So there was never any friends at... I mean, unless my mom went and got them. It wasn't like I had friends at my house all the time. But I knew how to entertain myself. Because I had chores to do. I had things that I could be doing. Um, we showed horses, so that was where all of the extra money went. It wasn't like we were getting to go on big lavish trips or I didn't get like name brand things. And look at, I turned out fine. Look at you, got bat, you got bats in your house. You're just living the dream. Living a normal life, I mean, come on. Um, no, and it's like, uh, so with all the stuff that's been going on with us in the county, we just don't have expendable income this year. Like, we're not, it's not like a dire situation, but we used to have, you know, more cash flow. And so we've gone to Lake Powell the last couple of years, and the boys want to go to Lake Powell. And I want to go to Lake Powell. And, you know, and then James said that I was upset with him because we're not going. I'm like, I can be upset that we're not going. It doesn't mean I'm upset with you, but I honestly like Lake Powell because there's a lot of things to do and there's no internet connection. So if you're bored, go hike. Go, um... You're forced. Yeah. You know, or like we had this little blow-up canoe that had a soft, or a little like blow-up raft and it's got a soft bottom. So the boys are trying to like paddle it, but because it's got a soft bottom, it doesn't really steer very well. But I mean, that took them a good like hour trying to get just around the little bay and, uh... They're just being boys, you know, yeah. they, they ha they're forced to be all the things that we really truly want for them to be. And that's the same with our vacation. We go in a few weeks here. I was thinking about that this morning and it's this little camp. I mean, it's a resort that's been around for freaking ever. It is nothing fancy. You have to bring your own everything, bedding, towels, toiletries, everything. There is no internet. There is no TVs. There is nothing. Um, there is no cell phone service. So you have to find fun the old-fashioned way. <laughs> um, and that's, like, I feel like that is something that we've all gotten away from. The other thing is, is that because we're carrying around many computers... We like to work all the time, all the time. And, and that's um, the thing I was talking about, like efficiency, right? It's like, well, I can just do more because I don't even have to be in an office because everything's right here at my fingertips. So I can do more. And let me just check my email. Let me just check my messages right before I go to sleep or right when I wake up. Midnight, and it's 6 not 5 a.m. Yeah. It's yeah. not good to 
be looking for notifications when you first wake up. But I'm that way. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, you just have to look around and I'm sure that you could say you're guilty of it at some point. I'm guilty of it. How many times when you're out eating or you're just somewhere in the doctor's office, wherever, and you see littles with their parents and then the littles are like, what we're training them to do is have their, their me time, their quiet time with our phones. I don't know if you've seen that, but I no, it's, it's, it's because a lot of times, right, it's like, I've got to do this, so could you just be quiet, right? It's an easier way. So when I was little, I always, again, I always liked to read. So um, my parents would have to go to these big dinners with clients. My dad trained racehorses, so you go to these dinners. And I remember my mom had this, like, drawstring bag that had books in it. And so I would talk to people, and then when I would get tired, I would just go sit in the corner and read, which is probably not better, really. But, I mean, that's how we got diverted was we read. And I, I just think you have a different, it's a different source of stimulation. The problem is like, it's overstimulating, right? So where I used to read when I was younger, now it's not just that they're going to watch a video on your phone, right? They're going to go on YouTube and everything's going to be connected and there's lots of lights and colors and everything's fast and moving and brrr, until it doesn't stop. And a book is too slow for them to read, right? And not only do they not want to watch a book, they probably don't even want to watch a long movie. They want to watch... YouTube shorts or TikTok, something like that. That's instant gratification. It's instant gratification. Yeah. Like I will send someone a TikTok that's like a minute long that I think is really funny. And if it's like longer than they seven seconds, it. they're like, I'm not going to watch it. I'm like, okay. All right. But like TikTok's training you seven seconds or less. Get the bite in and be done. I know. I know. Um, it's, it is crazy. I look at, like, we like to spend a lot of time at the lake. And um, several of my friends' kids do it. My kids do it. They sit around. Instead of going out and playing and doing something fun, They and it drives me crazy. Like, it's probably my number one pet peeve. They want to sit around and listen to adult conversation. And... Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I cannot handle it anymore. I'm like, get up. So remember too, when we were little, right? It was like, that was the conversation. This is an adult conversation. You're not supposed to be here for it. Mm -hmm. And I think like we, same thing. So to make up for that feeling when of being pushed aside when you were younger, we allow children to stay around more. And then all of a sudden you're like, maybe you shouldn't be around for this conversation. Yeah. And uh, it was, so um, Dustin and Christine were out from Texas. So I came up for dinner last night and we were talking and I'm not really big on a lot of things, but you don't get to leave the table until we're all done eating. Like, cause I grew up that we, no matter what, we almost always ate dinner together as a family. Like that was the time for everything to come back together and, um, kind of like got up to clean. Right. But it was just, I was like, sit down. He's like, I'm cleaning. So he doesn't want me to get mad. Well, he's bored. So he doesn't, he wants to go do something. And I shouldn't be mad at him for cleaning. And Christine's like, look, let's just let him go outside so we can talk, you know, as adults. And I was like, I will in a minute, but I'm going to win this one. Right? Like, you need to come and sit down because it's rude. And again, it's just that it's not interesting to you. Well, you can sit there for a few minutes and just yeah. be quiet, you know. I, I think the other thing, too, is, like, I grew up Catholic. So I uh, went to a lot of silent chapel which was like a lot of what silent chapel. So when you went to Catholic school, uh, you'd spend an hour in front of the tabernacle, like just quietly being, an hour, just being just quietly in adoration. Um, <clears throat> but you learn to be really good at sitting still and being quiet. And I don't think our kids have that. And I don't think we always have that. Um, but it's true, right? It's like, if I don't answer this phone call right away, if I don't answer this text message right away, they'll be disappointed. So now I need But that to is how this. society's gotten. Mm -hmm. Society has gotten that way. I mean, think of all the things that you do, Remy, on a day-to-day -day basis. And if somebody doesn't get back to you or I want instant gratification when it comes to that. I, I just want to put it behind me so I can move on to the next task. And the way that we live, our society has taught us that that's how it works. 
No, and it's a, it's a tough, it's, it's like I, ha I have to practice taking like, and again, we've talked about it on here, right? And it's hard for people. Like take 10 minutes out of your day where you turn your phone off and just be there. Don't be worried about the next thing you have to do. Just take 10 minutes to breathe. So last night we had baseball. We had a baseball game for Bronson. And um, it was so cold here yesterday morning. And um, I worked outside for a little bit. Like I had to go run errands in town. I got home about two-ish. We had to leave by 4.30 or I mean five for the game. And when I got home from running my errands in town, I was in a What time did your game start at? Um, six o'clock. And they're two hour games? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I was in a sweatshirt and jeans. And as the afternoon went on, it got nicer outside. So um, I was wrapping up my paperwork and uh, Brandon came in the house to change and he was like, where was I going with this? God. Being busy. Huh? Being busy. Being busy. No, I had a point I was going to make and now I forgot it. My God, I'm getting old. It'll come back. It will come back. Oh, I know where I was going with it. I just had to stop and think for a minute. So um, he's like, it is getting pretty warm out there. And I had, so I went, I went outside then because I didn't believe him. And I'm like, holy, I am going to die if I wear this. So I went back in the house and put shorts on. And when I changed my pants, I left my phone in our bedroom. And I got into the truck and we started going down the driveway and we were already running a little late. And I'm like, shoot, I forgot my phone in the bedroom. I'm like, you know what? Go on. I do not need it. I don't know when the last time. I would have left my phone somewhere for that long a period of time and not at first it was a little weird like I was definitely you know you get a little twitchy but there was no fires they know where, who if, if they can't get a hold of me they're gonna call Brandon it was fine and then I was forced to watch it well it's the same thing right so people call you and that's what I was talking about my clients about yesterday. So <clears throat> this was before my time. But they're saying, like, look, you should only be able to call people and get a hold of them at certain times, right? Like, you're calling personally. It had to be, like, after dinner, you know. And then we got an answering And then you got an answering machine. So I was around for the answering machine, right? They could leave you a message. But you still have, like, two to three business days to get back to someone. And then you got pagers. And then you got cell phones. And then you got voicemail. And then you have text messages. So... They can't, you can't give the excuse that you didn't get the message. And sometimes it becomes overwhelming. Like I will get a message, like I'll get a message from someone and I won't answer because like I am writing and then I'll get like another message like, Hey, did you get this? And I'm like, now it makes me not want to answer you. That's where I'm at. Because like. If you're asking me a question that, first of all, you could probably find the answer to relatively easy, and you're giving me no time, which means that my time is not valuable at all because I am in the middle of doing something. I will get back to you. And I hear it all the time because I talk, same thing, I talk to Christina on the phone and she'll answer the business phone. She's like, oh, let me call you back. And it'll be someone that, you know, they called and they wanted, they, they called her like 15 minutes ago for the quote. Losing Remy. Hopefully she comes back here soon. She's frozen. Wow, Remy is coming back on. Maybe here she comes. It's my phone. It's 100% my phone. We won't even blame Minnesota internet. But you know, they'll call 15 minutes before to get a, um, to get a quote from her. And it's like, oh, is it done yet? And she's like, how do you think I got this done this fast? I can be that way. I can be super impatient. And it's funny that you say that because like if I'm, well, like right now I'm in the middle of all this paperwork and working on numbers and all of that. And uh, yesterday I was stuck. I couldn't figure out what one of our transactions was for. And um, I called the person who would know and he didn't answer his phone. So
So then I called his wife and she wouldn't, or she answered her phone, but I, I'm not like, I just want to be done. You know what I mean? I'm like, I am yeah, very cool. patient. I, I am that I person. Try, I try to think about it. Like it's the same thing. Um, sorry, I have a sunburn. So my legs are feeling because I haven't had sun on my legs in a long time. <laughs> it's not great. That's why I keep leaning down to scratch my leg. I hate like, and this is what I hate. Like I, I'll get a phone call. Like someone was calling me the other day. They called me at six o'clock in the morning. And granted, they're ahead of our time, right? I'm like, don't call me at six o'clock in the morning. And now, when you call me back at eight, I'm still, I'm still not happy. With you. No, it's not you. No, but it's like someone calling about business, and like I don't mind when certain people call me early, right? But like if you're calling me about business, I know that we run a different lifestyle. Still call me during business hours, right? Call me nine to five. Don't call me at eight thirty at night. Don't call me at ten thirty at night because you want to talk about business. And I'm guilty of it. I try not to call. So I'll send a text message that literally says like, hey, you don't have to answer this right now. Just give me a call. This is what I'm thinking just so I, because for me, I'll forget what I'm going to do. And even then I have guilt about sending it. Like I hate, like we'll be working in the office and it's late. And he's like, oh, you should call him. I was like, people are either asleep or with their family right now. I'm not calling. And because it's, because you have to think about it from your side. You wouldn't want them calling you at that time. Right. Yeah, Were you I... You know, what? an answer in, in an immediate answer, not just like a little bit of an answer, an immediate answer. I know. I just feel like we can bitch about it all we want about our kids and what is happening. But it's on us because we have, we've trained them to be the way that they are. And I don't think it's just a select few. I think it's like no, and life, think about it. life is different, right? It is, and it's, I. You have Instacart, you have Amazon, you have everything, and it is all yeah. like it's, it's the same thing. thing. So I ordered the stuff on Prime, right? And like I was looking at when I was actually trying to see when the shampoo was getting delivered, and uh, I'm like, man, that's gonna take a long time. It's like three days instead of next day, because where we live, it's usually next day. Sometimes yeah, yeah. if I. Sometimes if I order early enough, it's the same day. Right? I was like, oh my, that's a long wait. It's not a long wait. Like, remember when we used to have mail order catalogs? Do you remember buying stuff out of mail order catalogs? And you like go through Here's the catalog. Yeah, like even limited, and there was like a, I can't remember what the other one was. Like, there's a girls one that I always liked when it came out, but like you'd fill out, you know, like they'd have like the little grid mm -hmm. box, and you have to write all this stuff. Your credit card. Stuff. Yeah, and send it in, and then it would get there, and then it would ship back to you in four to six weeks. Can you imagine waiting four to six weeks now? No. I and so, and we, we do the same thing when people are like, well, I ordered a saddle, and they said it's going to be like six months. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be nine months. And like, I can't believe you'd wait that long. I was like, oh, I'm just telling you, it's going to be nine months. And then they'll come, and they're like, well, it's really nice, and I really like it. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, but it still took you nine months. I, and like, Look, I tell people if, when they've ordered a saddle, if they say it's going to be ready in six months, start calling it five months so they can maybe get it in nine months because, but you know, you don't, you don't think about it. And I think honestly that translates into horse training too for us. People are used to an immediate fix and a quick response. Well, I can give you one of those. It just doesn't last for very long. I can patch everything up for three days, mm -hmm. but that's about all it's going to last, but they are not used to something. Think about like with bridal horses, you don't stick them in a bridle, like they go snaffle it and hack them You have to work on it. Two rain bridal. So you don't have yeah. to finish bridal horse. These horses aren't really finished in the bridal until they're seven or eight, like solid, solid. That's a long term investment. And people, that's why people like fraternity horses more. Like there's, mo there's money in it, but it's also, you don't have to sit there and wait. So long. Yeah. I don't know. I, um, Also, I just, my mom comes over and we kick the boys out of the house and they swim with her all day because it's hot. So she just does that. But if we don't, if we didn't make the effort to make them go outside, they would be playing on like the 19,000 gaming consoles that we have. Yeah. And that's, that is my point. Um, like for me and my kids, we don't have a pool, but we've got access to the lake that they have all to themselves. We don't live far from town. We live, um, less than a mile from town. There's a ton of town kids who come out here. 
they've got pit bikes, they've got four wheelers. I don't really want them riding them on the road, but if they wear their helmet and they're um, mindful about it, I don't care. We've got all kinds of horses to ride. And I just feel like some days they come out, they go down to the lake for a half hour. They come up here, they'll ride a horse. And then they'll sit there and look at you like, now what? Yeah, and like think about it. Like we have it honestly still better than most people because we can kick them out for like in a safe space for a while, right? And we're here. And we're, we're here. People. So we're not working a normal job. So we're here. So they're not like lashkey kids. Um, we have access to a lot of things that a lot of kids would kill to have access for. Mm -hmm. And we don't live in a track. Like, so I can't imagine how much more difficult and mindful you have to be when you live that kind of life. Because for us, what's funny too is like, not all my boys are the same. T's always like outside climbing trees and- Mine aren't. And has doing an imagination. Something. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like, oh, if we just had this, you know, we could do that. And I'm like, man, just go build some mm. shit. Mm. Last year, James did give them hammers and nails and made them build things. Like, he just gave them scrap wood. He was just like, build something. That's good. My kids used to do that. I ran across a, an old post um, from a couple of years ago when they made a flipping treehouse out of pallets. Yeah. With nails and hammers and all of it. And it was cool. And they yeah, said they can't sleep in it. We just, uh, but you do, you have to practice being mindful. You have to practice dealing with solitude. And, uh, and the reason, folks, that we're having this conversation is because we are noticing it in, or I, I'm noticing it in our children. And it's driving me nuts. And it's like the only person to blame is ourselves. So, but then when you start noticing something in yourself or your kids, you start noticing it. All and I, I, I don't think it's just, it's, it's not just, like I said, society's changed too, right? Everything's available all the time. So that's why I think we have to be, it's like, think about even with movies, right? Like a lot of these movies are releasing in the theater and then on a streaming service a week later. Or we just have to wait like a couple months for it to come back out. Movie on theaters will probably be something of the past for me because, who wants to leave their home anymore? Like, yeah. Like so it's just, stay it's all the, shit. and I, I mean, I'm horrible for it too. And I think the other thing is it's right. It's that it's that constant noise and pressure to keep moving forward, to keep being successful, to do more, to make more out of your time, because if you could just do this then everything would be okay. And when you stop for a second, it's scary. It's scary to realize like, well, Okay, there's I more to do. We'll say that um, and I hate that I am this way, but this is who I am, so I have to, I'll deal with it. But when I went to Valley Fair on Monday, Remy, I was not gonna go. Like it was never that was never in the plan for me to go. And uh, I ended up waking up that morning and I'm like, you know what? I only get a few more summers left with these kids. What do I have to do that's so important today? The majority of our, well, I shouldn't say the majority, six of our horses were at a horse show all weekend. They were getting the day off. The other eight of them, Brandon could take care of. He could ride them. He didn't need me here to do that. So I went, but I felt guilty because I'm like, I should be at home working. I should be at home working. No, like. No, and I, I'm guilty of it. Like the same thing. So I've been swimming in the afternoon with the boys and I used to just keep working and working and working. And the problem is I, it doesn't get me any farther um, because if I get something done, then there's just more I can get done. Right. It just feels it's like, I hate the guiltiness that you feel. And now I'm just like, that. so what I, I killed myself to not have, any more or any less success. I've had no personal identity because I, my identity is wrapped up in how hard I work and how heavy of a thing I can lift. So when I'm done, I'm done. And I'm no longer gonna feel guilty if I need a nap for taking a nap. 
because other people do it. Other people are allowed to do it. Why am I not allowed to do it? Because we don't let ourselves. Yeah. And then, and then you get burnt, then you get burnt out and what else, you know, I can't, I can't bear it any longer. And also you're also creating, that's also a bad work life balance that your children are watching, right? If all you have to do is work, if that is the only thing that defines you, how hard you work and what you can do, that's all. You're just creating robots for the future, really, that think that life is just about working. And for what? So we work harder to make more money that we won't enjoy anyhow. Oh, great. 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 What are you going to do? Take it with you? No. Well... I feel like it was a good conversation today, Remy. Um, I was going to say, well, A, if anybody has any send us suggestions on who you'd like to hear us uh, interview, um, suggestions of topics, but most importantly, like who you'd like to hear us chat with or have an interview with. Um, because it's hard to. Yeah, if I could, uh, I have a couple that I, that I'm trying to guilt into coming on. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Is like, it's hard to come up with ideas, and then the second uh, half to that is is getting somebody to commit is also hard. So, if you have suggestions on who you'd like to hear or who we should ask, um, let us know. Agree, Remy. Drop us a line on the on the Facebook or the gram or the tubes of yous. So, so. Yeah. Well, until next week. Mm-hmm. Be bold. Be brave. Be humble. I've been practicing. Look at you. Check you out. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a great weekend, Remy. Do you have big plans? Well, we have a clinic and jackpot on Saturday in Anaheim, so it's closer to the coast, so it's cooler anyway, and it's under a cover, so living the dream this weekend. Speaking of um, jackpot, I so I ordered this, like, texting service this winter, and I tried to use it so many times, and it would never go through, and now while I'm doing my books, I'm like, oh, yeah, these monthly texts, these late fees, that texting fees that are coming out, but we've never gotten any use. So I started messaging the company and I'm like, we are not getting, I mean, we're, we're tried four or five times. The messages were never being sent. Why you have to help me here. She's like, well, you're using the word jackpot and cellular carriers will flag that as spam. Yeah. So um, which I had, we used to have a service like that, especially for the team roping, and it was the same thing. So I couldn't say jackpot, but I could send out flyer images. So I just did that. Mm-hmm. So, in case you were wondering, that's the same thing. Like, I don't want to get a lot of text messages, even though it's a great way to get a lot of people. Like, uh, all the Melanie Smith ones come through really early in the morning because those, those sales start, you know, earlier back there. Really? I'm like, who is texting me? And then I was like, I need to block this number. <laughs> Don't want to say that. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, guys. Um, thank you, Remy. And we will see you next week. Have a right, good weekend. Bye. Bye, girls.